Hi, this is Dr. Roprishan from the College of Charleston, and I want to talk to you about the Brain Computer Interface BCI with eMotive Epoch 10 uh, hardware um, and demonstrate the use of the hardware and the software provided by um, the producer. So, eMotive Epoch 10 um, is a very versatile uh, device that can be used. Uh, for um, recording um, 14 channels EEGs um, and has accelerometers that can detect the head motion, the direction of the motion uh, and uh, has a very high signal quality and the software also um, has multiple options for uh, cleaning the data, filtering. Um, it uses the traditional 1020 um, system for electrode position, uh, the international system, but uh, it only uh, records 14 sides, 14 points. It has seven electrodes and two references on each side uh, of, uh, the, uh, of, of the head. And uh, as you notice, it has some uh, reference points. The uh, location are indicated as M1, M2, and P2, P3, P4. Uh, the hardware itself has a traveling case and the headset itself. Um, and you also receive an ESB uh, dongle that you uh, put inside the computer, you attach to your computer, you receive the saline um, also that you'll use uh, for your felt um, uh, packs uh, that uh, will go inside the sensors. So briefly, uh, your unit actually that you see there um, is, uh, is coming with uh, the ESB dongle, as you see it, with the saline solution, and also you'll get um, the the uh, felt pads uh, that actually go uh, in the uh, electrodes uh, to make a good contact with the skin, um, and also you have an ESB connector so that you can charge the unit. Now, before you can use that unit, you need to download some uh, software from, uh, from uh, eMotive. Uh, for that, you will have to create an account with them. It's free, obviously, the account. Uh, and you can download also the free software that comes with, uh, with your unit. Um, so the eMotive installer actually contains all the software pieces that uh, you will ever need to run this unit. Uh, this is a significant improvement uh, over the previous versions of eMotive. And you just, uh, you may want to select all the, the uh, options they offer uh, because uh, some of them may be very useful uh, for some special projects uh, like a brain computer interface that we try um, now and we will demonstrate. Um, so just let the system install everything. As you notice, you can install eMotive even on a Raspberry Pi, on a, on a $35 Raspberry Pi computer and run it uh, through that um, and you um, even a brain computer interface and control uh, devices with your brain waves um, with a very very simple computer but very powerful at the same time like a raspberry pi the computer will ask you to allow access to different uh, controls and um, that's something you would like to, to select. Uh, again, as I said, you will need to install the eMotive app um, and 
uh, once you're done with the software installation, you'll just need to prepare the unit for use. And um, I uh, demonstrate actually um, using the saline so that uh, I um, create a better contact between the uh, felt pads and the electrodes inside so I can have a clean uh, EEG recording. Um, obviously, you can uh, put a drop of saline uh, directly on the uh, felt pads, uh, but at the same time, you notice that on the back of each um, uh, electrode, there is a hole, and you can use that hole also to drop um, some saline, and that is especially useful uh, when you're running the experiment because the um, felt pads will actually dry out after a while so you need a colleague to help you <clears throat> without removing actually the unit um, a colleague can help you and um, drop a few uh, saline drops uh, in uh, the back of the electrodes so that you maintain a good electric contact uh, with the with the skin and high quality recording. All right. So now that you set it up, uh, you need to actually uh, place the unit uh, on your head. And um, there are different uh, locations for the electrodes that you can uh, actually um, set. I demonstrate one of the locations uh, that you can use for uh, recording the EEG for the brain-computer interface. So basically, we're using the electric signals, the brain waves recorded by the unit, to control uh, different kind of uh, systems. Um, obviously, you will have to connect your unit uh, with a Bluetooth device to your computer, and um, you just need to make sure that you turn the Bluetooth on and you make it uh, that uh, make that connection with uh, the uh, USB dongle you will notice when uh, you have a new device discovered by the Bluetooth. All right, so um, the first step, obviously, uh, is uh, training the neural network that was already implemented by eMotive, and um, they offer a few different options. Obviously, the mental commands that you can provide to the unit uh, they uh, must be uh, very well um, uh, thought ahead and um, you have the option of accepting or rejecting the training that you do um, and the computer will also offer you some feedback on how well you train the neural network um, so let's see the experiment that we carried out so first, I check the quality of the uh, EEG signal. As you uh, notice, I opened the, uh, the application. Uh, I need to connect the unit with the uh, ESB dongle to my computer now and check the uh, start the unit. And now I need to connect it through the software and obviously I need to make sure that the Bluetooth is turned on and that it can discover the unit. And as soon as the unit is discovered, uh, I will see it active in my, um, in my emotive software. Definitely it was discovered and now it's checking um, the uh, quality of the EEG signal recorded from the unit and it looks like it's at a hundred percent quality uh, right now you see that EEG signal it fluctuates uh, you see 92 percent some electrodes go off if I move the headset you see that 
uh, the uh, signal kind of goes off. Um, even if you move the electrodes around, you will have to wait a few seconds until the uh, whole set comes back to normal and, and records correctly again. Um, so you'll have to uh, maintain a very good electric uh, contact and that's where you can use a little bit more saline, have a colleague helping you out. So what you want is the signal to be over 90% uh, in the range of 100% and you'll always notice uh, which electrode is going off. Now once you have it at 100% then um, you, you, you satisfied with both the EEG quality and the signal quality there, um, then you can uh, proceed with um, your uh, brain computer interface. And I selected now the brain computer interface and I have an account already created with, um, with eMotive. Uh, we already went through the checking of the device and now as you see, I'm in the phase of uh, training the neural network. Um, I'm going to delete my previous training uh, of the neural network. Um, it has multiple uh, settings. The first training that you do is for the uh, neutral position. Uh, so basically that is the baseline of your brain activity. You just relax. Is just the baseline, is nothing else there. So again, starting the brain computer interface, um, a neural network. And now I need to check again the electrodes, and they are okay, good quality. And I start the training. You notice I have on the right side the training for the neutral position. So let's start the training. You see a kind of a 3D uh, picture. You uh, is not moving um, because during the training the cube just sits there and you have to be very careful about training uh, because the first two trainings uh, for every single um, for, uh, option you have are crucial for the neural network behavior. Now the second training as you see it, uh, it simulates uh, pushing uh, a three-dimensional object. You see that uh, in, in a second it, it simulates the object moving away. So again, the first two trainings uh, are crucial. You want to be sure that you did uh, your best to train correctly the network and you should probably redo the training many times uh, so that you are very confident that you always focused on the command that you have. You also have uh, a meter that will tell you how well you did um, and you usually want to um, see a, a very high quality uh, for, your, uh, for your training data. If you're not happy, you can delete and restart the training at any time um, and obtain a better quality data. This is again the relaxed position um, and as I recommended you should train the neural network multiple times. This is an eight second relaxed position um, so that kind of takes the baseline of your brain activity. And then you can select which kind of uh, movements you want to simulate. In this case, again, I start, I start simulating pushing the three-dimensional cube away, as you see it. Um, and if I think that I focused well enough on, um, on the uh, activity, then I can accept that training. Again, the first two trainings for every single uh, motion are crucial for uh, the initial condition for the neural network. Uh, and let's see if I can get a high quality um, signal uh, for the third training for the same uh, movement. I will see an indicator of the power. You see that? It's pretty great. And I accept that uh, focus now. Let's try focus again, see if we can push hard enough forward 
the object away from us. Well, it's not a very high quality, it's 29%. And well, I decided to reject that training and try again. Hopefully, I can get a, a higher uh, quality focus and a higher quality signal. It is crucial so that you train the network very well. Like in this case, I'm happy with that. Um, let's say I want to uh, simulate um, pushing the, the cube. Uh, oh, come on, decide which way. All right, drop it. Okay, downward, good. So let's simulate now dropping the, the, uh, the cube. Very good. So you have to focus on a mental activity that is related to dropping that cube. You can imagine pushing the cube downward or any other activities. You have the tips uh, for, uh, for uh, imagining this kind of motion in the user manual. So again, the first two trainings are very important for the initial condition of the neural network. Uh, but you need to keep training the network and hopefully uh, at a very high quality you will see immediately the mark if we did okay let's try it not so good so I decided to reject that um, training because it was not very focused uh, so you have to force your mind to focus on moving that object downward well, okay, well, not very good either, but let's try train it again. Let's see if we can get a higher quality. It's important to, to focus uh, on that particular activity. This is not bad, 55%, but uh, we should keep training the neural network to get a better signal and, and a better focus uh, so that the network can learn what we meant um, by those activities. This is not a bad uh, training, 100% uh, focus there. So um, you got the idea of uh, the necessity of training multiple times so that the network can distinguish between your intentions. 81% is not bad. I'm going to accept that. So once you're done with the training, here is the testing part. So now I'm really testing uh, my uh, focus of my mind, see if I can push the cube downward. There you go. And let's see more testing. As you see, the focus bar at the bottom of the screen is pretty intense. I'm pushing the cube away and pushing away again. Not bad focus, not bad mental focus. And um, let's try testing the lifting of the cube. Not bad. It, you see the bar at the bottom. Uh, it's pretty intense. And let's try now a different training, moving the cube downward. You see the bar at the bottom, which tests the focus on your commands. So that demonstrates the use of the brain-computer interface and EEG signals with the eMotive Epoch 10.